Hi guys, welcome to my kitchen and welcome to my home. Valentine's Day is coming up. To me personally, Valentine's Day is a little bit of a commercial event, so I don't really get into the hype of it. After all, there should not be one special day in the year to celebrate the love. Every day should be Valentine's Day. But it would still be nice to do something special on that day. It could be something very personal at home with your loved one, like cooking him or her a romantic dinner or baking a beautiful red velvet cake. This cake is so beautiful and so romantic. It has a beautiful deep red color, a velvety smooth texture, and it's topped with a very sweet and creamy buttercream or cream cheese frosting. I mean, seriously, can it get better than this for Valentine's Day? This cake screams Valentine's Day. Okay, so let's get started. The ingredients you need are flour, sugar, baking powder, salt, baking soda, cocoa powder, vegetable oil, some plain yogurt, three eggs, white vinegar, some vanilla, and of course, red food coloring. And for the buttercream frosting you need, some powdered sugar, butter, some vanilla, and a little bit of milk. You'll find all the ingredients with the exact quantities in the description box below this video. So to start off, you have to preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you have to prepare your pans. Now I am using um, three, three pans that are the same size because I want to make a three layer cake. You can use just two pans and make a, a two layer cake or you can use one big pan and cut, cut it in half and frost the middle. It's up to you. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, grease my pans. So I'm going to pour but a little bit of the oil in the pan and I'm going to distribute it with a paper towel in the bottom and on the sides. So after I grease my pan, I'm going to line the bottom with a sheet of wax paper. I strongly recommend that you use wax paper or parchment paper because um, that way you're, you're, you're ensure that your cake won't stick. If you don't have it or if you don't want to use it, just make sure that you grease and flour your pan. Now I'm going to mix my dry ingredients. So in a medium bowl, I'm going to sift the flour my cocoa powder, the baking powder, the baking soda, and the salt. I'm going to whisk them together and set them aside. And now in a large bowl I'm going to mix my sugar and the oil. Today I'm going to use my hand mixer but you can of course use a stand mixer or even you can whisk it by hand. And I'm going to beat this for about a minute or two until it gets you know like nice and fluffy. When they're well combined, I'm going to add the eggs and the vanilla. And beat for about two minutes until it's well combined. Set it aside for now. Now in a separate bowl, you're going to mix your yogurt with the vinegar and the red food coloring. Now I'm going to use the liquid red food coloring and I'm going to use two tablespoons of that. But if you're using gel or other kinds of food coloring, you might not need as much. So basically you have to um, add enough color to get a very, very deep red yogurt mixture. You see that? It's very, very deep red. So that means that your batter will turn out to be very red as it should be. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is you're going to add half of your flour mixture and you're going to mix it on low speed until it's just incorporated. That means until you can't see the flour anymore. And now I'm going to add the yogurt mixture and the other half of your flour mixture. Again, mix it on low speed until it's just incorporated. Make sure not to over mix your flour because otherwise, if you do, your cake will turn out too hard. And then I'm going to evenly divide the batter into three pans. It's important that you have the same amount of batter or almost the same amount of batter in each pan because you're going to bake the three pans at the same time and so you want the baking time to be the same for all three. So when I finish dividing the batter, I'm just going to tap them like that to make sure any air bubbles come out. And now I'll pop them in the oven and bake them for, I would say for this size, it's gonna take around 20 to 25 minutes at the maximum. Though my oven is preheated to 180 degrees Celsius, so I'm gonna put them in the oven now. So 
I took my cakes out of the oven. They are beautiful. Look, look at the color. It, it's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. It's like a deep red. So I check for their doneness by inserting a knife or a toothpick. And if the knife or the toothpick comes out clean with no batter, that means the cake is done. But be careful not to overbake them because they will turn out too hard if you do. Uh, they took 25 minutes to bake, but like I said, this varies on your oven, on the type of the pan you're using, and on the amount of batter you have in each pan. So I let them cool for 5 minutes, and now I'm ready to flip them and let them cool completely. If you find that the sides are sticking a little bit to the pan, just loosen them with your finger or with a knife. Perfect. It's just perfect. Now before we start frosting the cake, before we do anything to the cake, we have to let it cool completely and that means it has to be cold to the touch because as it cools it's going to firm up, it's going to be easier for us to frost it. And that should take about half an hour. Another thing is, do you notice that my, um, my layers are perfectly leveled? They're not thinner on one side and thicker on the other side. I'm going to do a video to tell you my tips on how to get perfectly leveled cakes um, every time. So be sure to watch that. I'm going to link it down in the description box below. So while the cakes are cooling, we're going to make the buttercream frosting. One thing to mention though before I start, the red velvet cake uh, can be frosted with either buttercream frosting or cream cheese frosting. For me personally, it's buttercream, but cream cheese frosting is also very, very popular. And I think in most bakeries, they use uh, cream cheese frosting uh, with the red velvet cake. So it's completely up to you. You can use this or that. You can use both if you want. It's really a judgment call. And if you want to know how I do the cream cheese frosting, just watch my carrot cake video. And in it, I, sh I, I demonstrate the, uh, the cream cheese frosting. So now onto the buttercream frosting. So first I'm going to start by sifting the powdered sugar. After I finish sifting my sugar, I'm going to cream my butter. It is very important that the butter is at room temperature. And that means that it has to be very soft, that it can be creamed, but it's important also that it's not melted. So the best thing to do is just leave it at room temperature a um, couple of hours before you use it. And then gradually I'm going to add my powdered sugar in four batches. See how my frosting is it's very dry and, uh, and crumbly. Don't worry, that's normal for now. When the sugar and the butter um, are well incorporated together, I'm going to add my vanilla. And then at this point, I'm going to start adding my milk. You'll only add the milk one tablespoon at a time until you reach the right consistency. If you add too much milk, your frosting will fall apart and it will kind of disintegrate, so be careful. Just one tablespoon at a time. Now, if you add too much milk and you, if you see that your um, frosting became a little bit curdled, don't worry, just add more sugar until, you, until it comes back to shape. This is perfect. We're now ready to frost the cake. I'm going to use a cardboard, which is the same size of the cake, but if you don't have one, just place the cake directly on a flat dish. So I'm going to place the, um, like, I want the flat side to be up. So I'm just gonna do that. And it would help a lot if you have a rotating cake stand. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of the cream cheese, uh, of the buttercream frosting and just start frosting the first layer. Now the amount of frosting to put is really up to you. You can just spread a very thin layer or make it a little bit thicker like I'm doing here. So then I will take an offset spatula and just smooth out the layer. And then I will place my second layer. Again, with some icing 
circle on the top. And again, using your offset spatula, just smooth it out. Of course, it doesn't have to be perfect. The text is perfect, and that's what matters. And finally, the last layer. So here at this point, you can either leave the cake like this. Actually, if I'm not doing, if I wasn't filming a video today, and if it wasn't for a special occasion, I'd probably leave it like this. Maybe just frost the top, because I like to see the, the, the red layers, you know? And also, if you don't like it too sweet, because the buttercream is very sweet, then you can definitely stop at this point. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to continue frosting the whole cake. So what you're gonna do now, is we're gonna do something called crumb coating. You see, how, no matter how careful I am, I'm always going to get crumbs on the buttercream. And it's going to show. And you know, if you want to do like a beautifully decorated cake, you don't want those crumbs to show. So, we crumb coat it. Cover the whole thing with buttercream, just a thin layer. And let it dry. And after it dries, then it's going to be very easy to uh, decorate the rest of the cake. And here it really doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be well covered. You want to tame those crumbs, keep them in place so that they don't show up on your final product. So I think this should do. So you see we just coated the cake and we and it's it's basically like you're gluing the crumbs into place and also you have to do this step not just um, for when you're using buttercream but also if you're gonna cover it with fondant for example you would still have to crumb coat it just to make sure you know the cake is held in place the crumbs are held in place and the the layers are just locked together so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this in the fridge for about half an hour just until the buttercream firms up it's going to get a, bit, a little bit hard to the touch and that way we can um, frost it very easily without any crumbs getting in the way. Okay, so my crumb coated cake was in the fridge for about half an hour and now I'm going to continue frosting it. So I'm not going to use the same um, spatula that I used for the crumb coating because uh, it has some crumbs in there and I don't want to contaminate the rest of the, of the buttercream. Okay, I know contaminate is probably a strong word <laughs> for the context, but you know what I mean. So now I'm going to place the rest of my buttercream on the top of the cake. And then it, I will bring it down to the sides. You see how on top now it's smooth and white and no crumbs? Now I'm going to go down to the sides and just basically keep turning or rotating my cake until all the sides are frosted. Like I said, it's much easier if you have a rotating cake stand, but if you don't have one, you can still do it. It's just going to be a little bit harder. You have to move um, the cake around. Now, if you want the frosting to be even smoother, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a hot glass of water and dip the spatula in it. Wipe the spatula. And so basically the hot spatula is gonna act like a, like a straightening iron. It's gonna smooth out any, um, like any bumps. See, it's super smooth. So once I finish frosting the sides or smoothing out the sides, I'm gonna smooth out the top by basically uh, bringing the frosting from the outside towards the center. Very gently. Okay, I will stop here for now. If you have any um, red glitter, like edible glitter, you can just sprinkle it on top. You can use any decoration that you want, basically. Okay, so last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to 
transfer the cake onto my nice flat dish. And there we go. Okay, it's now time to cut the cake. I always get very excited when I cut the red velvet cake because I love to see the beautiful red layers inside with the white buttercream. It's just beautiful. Let's see if it's going to turn as beautiful this time. Oh, wow. Oh my god, look at that. Look at that. I made this. And you know what? If I made it, then you can make it too. I mean, you saw the steps. It's very easy to do. Can we get a close-up? More than words can say. It is so good. I mean, seriously. If you make this for your loved ones, isn't it much, much better than going out to dinner and, you know, like, wasting your time and money? This comes from the heart. It's so romantic. It's beautiful and it's red. It's perfect for Valentine's Day. So guys, you know what to do. You have to go make this cake. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you try it out. It's absolutely fantastic. And happy Valentine's Day. Bye. Oh, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Bye.